Well, coming up on today's show, the Porsche Taycan still sports its fake exhausts on the Nürburgring. VW have been busy trademarking names, and they're not what you think. And Tesla's Model 3 accounts for over half of a very important number. But first of all, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. Look at that, Tuesday the 20th of November. My name is Martin Lee, and I've been through every EV story I can find today, picked out the ones that I think you'd be most interested in, and I've got them in today's show. As always, thank you to our uh, friends and the team at myev.com. They help me make this show. Uh, They are also pretty busy building the world's first marketplace all about buying and selling UZVs and you can learn about and research electric cars on their site as well USA only yes I know you're very lucky in North America that you get to have a a little play with myev.com for buying and selling and let me know what you think of that they're still building that out always looking for comments and feedback and your input what a day it was today. I had several people forward me this story, by the way, so I would, um, I'd would i give you credit, but a few people did send this one on to me. Who should we thank for the Nissan Leaf? That would be Carlos Ghosn. What about the Renault Zoe? Another great car. That would be Carlos as well. <sighs> Nissan have had to take some action today because he is the no longer running the day-to-day activities at Nissan, Renault, uh, but he is chairman of the Alliance, and they had to issue a statement because of uh, some legal proceedings which started today. They said this, and I quote, as the misconduct uncovered through our internal investigation constitutes clear violations of the duty of care as directors, Nissan's chief executive will propose to the board of directors to promptly remove Carlos Ghosn from his positions as chairman and representative director. We'll also propose the removal of Greg Kelly from his position as representative director. Well, along with the uh, Nissan director, Greg Kelly, Carlos Ghosn was arrested for reporting compensation amounts on the Tokyo Stock Exchange securities report that were less than the actual amount. So he, this is, I mean, I'm a layman interpreting this. He earned more than he was admitting to. Uh, It was in order to reduce the disclosed amount of his compensation. He was already extraordinarily well compensated. A few people left, had a bit of a bad taste in their mouth, how much money he was paid. But he definitely led the turnaround of Nissan. And from the perspective that you and I are interested in electric cars, well, the Nissan Leaf is the world's biggest selling electric car until the Model 3 catches up. So that's why we're interested in that. How much money does one person need? I'm going to start questioning his morals or what's going on. And he's only been arrested, and that doesn't mean uh, anything more than he's been arrested. And you can't uh, do two and two equals anything else apart from four at this stage. So let the legal process do what that has to do. And so he's been found guilty of of nothing in terms of the eyes of the law. But how much money does one person need? So do you know what I mean? Like you, you look at those, the super rich, kind of the Elon Musks of the world who just wants to he wants to make a lot of money in order to decide what to do with it. And you look at people like well, people like Bill Gates wants to give it all away in his lifetime. He wants to see all of his money given away. And uh, you just think, man, oh man, it's that situation of money being the downfall of people. It's kind of sad. Well... One minute, you're the chairman of the board. The next minute, you've been nicked. Or as one person on Twitter said today, gone in 60 seconds. Brilliant. Moving on, the Porsche Taycan is bringing its fake exhausts to the Nürburgring. Uh, This is according to a Motor One article. Porsche uh, keeps playing the game of this is a fossil car, honest gov, around the Nürburgring when it's testing its first fully electric vehicle. uh, Confirmed to be the, uh, it's now been renamed from Mission E to Taycan, T-A-Y-C-A-N, pronounced Taycan. Uh, We have no idea why the German sports car maker is still using fake, uh, fake exhaust tips. We're not tricked by this by the way Porsche um, its trial vehicle has been pounding around the Nürburgring and it's already made itself it made it clear it will not lower itself to give it gimmicks and use a, a V8 in its all electric cars is Anthony Car from Motor1.com anyway good to see Porsche advancing the development of the Taycan uh, the prototype has been filmed by Automotive Mike and it features a little camouflage on the headlamps and the, ta- the taped tail lights probably safe to assume the vehicle's getting very close to final production form now and the car is giving us a good idea of both what it'll look like and how it'll be performing uh, Porsche say the Taycan is 0 to 60 well 0 to 62 actually in three and a half seconds 
124 miles an hour is the one they're really going for because they are going for the 200 kilometer benchmark and that's going to be 12 seconds as far as the range and charging not going to have the world's biggest battery by the way range only 310 miles i say only why do you want more range and that's porsche's argument you can have a smaller battery if it can take juice quickly and of course the 800 volt battery on the porsche Taycan can indeed do that 0 to 80 or is it 20 to 80 one of those in 15 minutes uh, when i say 20 to 80 if you're new to the podcast by the way uh, we talk in terms of we never really car makers never really talk in terms of fully charging to 100 percent. a lot of them are using this kind of 0% to 80% or 20% to 80% metric when they give their minutes, their times of how quickly they'll charge. Just to fill you in, if you're new to the show, I'll put a link to Anthony's article in the show notes. Well, Volkswagen went on a trademarking tear this week, reserving nine names that could apply to motorised vehicles with the European Union Intellectual Property Office, the IPO. The names are numerical, ID1, ID2, ID3, etc., all the way through to ID9. And they're likely to apply to their suite of upcoming electric vehicles, according to VW Vortex website, who study these kind of things. Volkswagen's already spent a lot of time and effort applying the name to its EV concepts. So far, the concept has been called the Buzz, the Cross, or the Vision. Uh, Volkswagen has claimed that all four of the concepts, the Buzz, the Cross, the vis- Vision, all with Zs, by the way, Vision, Cross, Buzz, and the ID, which is kind of the ID Neo, but maybe it's not the ID Neo. Uh, those four cars represent vehicles that it intends to put into production, but they've always been clear these are concepts, even though they've made them. So, when they hit the market, will they be ID1, ID2, ID3, ID4, etc.? Well, VW have form if you go back and look at the Beetle in calling cars by numbers. It leaves them plenty of space to grow. I mean, I I suppose officially it it, it gives them space to infinity if you're just using numbers. The naming convention also reflects a trend in the automotive industry with numbers. Things like the Model 3, Polestar 1, actually Polestar 1, 2 and 3 we know are coming. The Lincoln Co. 01, 02, Cadillacs, XT4, XT5, etc. I'll put a link to that article in the show notes if you're interested. It could be that those concept names, Cross, Buzz, Vision, ID Neo, are just leading us up the garden path. Maybe when those VW cars are on sale, they'll be the ID1. Interesting. They've certainly registered the names. Maybe they're just playing a game. Who knows? Well, Skeleton Technologies and Rights Group have signed a high-volume, multi-million euro contract over the next five years. Skeleton Technologies supply graphene ultracapacitors and the latest KERS-enabled hybrid buses produced by the Rights Group. According to Electric Vehicles Research, the integration of graphene ultracapacitors onto the bus, onto the double-deck buses as well, can save 36% on these hybrid buses. Are still diesel, still diesel buses for the baseline. It also adds at least another three passengers to the capacity compared to the lithium-ion-based hybrid equivalent. You know what's coming. All the hybrid technology is fantastic. Ultra capacitors, an interesting technology. And by the way, check out a fully charged video for more details. But just go full electric. You knew I was going to say that. Oh, I'm so predictable these days. Seriously, all the buses in Shenzhen. You're not going to give that example as well, didn't you? I keep doing it. Uh, places like Shenzhen, every single bus, 16,000 of them are electric. Why muck about with hybrids? Okay, moving on to the final story today, and according to the latest sales data of the mid-sized luxury segment gathered by Good Car, Bad Car, and combined with Inside EV's own Model 3 estimates, I do love to check out the sales scoreboard on Inside EV's. The newest Tesla Model 3 makes an earthquake in its class. Last month, October 2018, Tesla sold approximately, because we don't know, 17,750 Model 3s. The overall sales of the mid-size market was 34,000 odd. That translates to the Model 3 being over 50% of the entire segment in which it sits. Now, one of the commenters on Inside EVs goes by the name of Deckhard, said this. I thought it was a really interesting comment, which is why I'm going to repeat it for you. Tesla's growth hasn't been derived from buyers of traditional premium brands because that market size, the total market size, is increasing. But instead, 
They've also been drawing customers from outside the premium segment. However, even if it's only cannibalized or stolen, 13% of sales from other manufacturers, also in that luxury segment, it's also limited any chance for growth that they had for the future. So two really good points there by that, uh, that commenter. Firstly, Teslas are getting buyers from outside the luxury segment, and even then, a little bit of cannibalization going on just means it's enough to hold back the others. You wait till the Model Y comes out. If the Model 3 can do this, add a mid-sized SUV, the kind of car that those German car buyers really love, and you just watch those sales figures. You think the Model 3 is going to be big. I believe they call it the Tesla Stretch. I don't know who does call it that. I've seen it called a, a few times on different websites. I'd love to know who first came, kind of came up with it because that's exactly what it is. People call it the Tesla Stretch. People who wouldn't normally be buying a car of that price find a way to do it because they really badly want that Tesla Model 3. Moving on to your section of the show then. Question of the week this week is a goodie. It's been said by myev.com. This, uh, this week's question of the week is as follows. Since most dealers today are not well educated in EVs and don't carry enough inventory, what would you choose? Would you still want to go to a dealer, but they get their EV act together? Or would you be open to using a new kind of service? Kind of a service where maybe an EV is bought to your house or workplace and you sit with it for a day or two, maybe over a long weekend someone comes along to educate you about it but in return for that there is a small fee for you if you do end up buying the car maybe a small fee anyway maybe a little commission to be paid would you like to find new ways of buying a car if you want to leave us your answer brand new way for you to leave us an answer as well which is on myv.com uh, you can go to the website you can click on research at the top and then you'll see question of the week pop in there and it's just a typical kind of discuss forum and you can leave your answer or oh, there's always the youtube comments you can email me direct which is hello at evnewsdaily.com thank you to 120 patrons of the show if you'd like me to add your name to the list uh, you are welcome to check out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily and i put all the stats open there I think a lot of people kind of hide their stats for podcasts. It's really hard to find, um, apart from on YouTube, where it does show how many people have watched and listened. But I put all of those stats online, by the way, on a dashboard. You can see on the Patreon page, there's a link through to the dashboard. All the monthly stats are up there. You can see how the podcast is growing, and, and you can see where the Patreon investment is going as well in terms of the show getting bigger and thousands of people around the world learning about EVs now and you and I spreading the word. So in case you're thinking, well, I'd, I'd like to support the podcast maybe at five dollars or ten dollars let's face it that's just a, a posh coffee once a month at five dollars or a, a super posh coffee bit of whipped, whipped cream on top uh for ten dollars a month but where's that gonna go well you can see how the podcast is growing and we're paying for more places for it to go online and streaming and hosting and those kind of things every penny on patreon does go back into the podcast you'll be pleased to hear of which there are 301 previous episodes online for free right now for you to download and listen to i mean there's more than any sane person would want to listen to but you can pick and choose uh, if you want to leave a little review maybe or a little star rating one star five star heck you decide but just leaving a little review really works wonders and the algorithms and stuff really helps promote the podcast and if you want to say hi on the socials you can do that facebook linkedin and twitter uh, by searching ev news daily and we should come top of the search results in the meantime have a wonderful day and i will catch you tomorrow